Hello everybody, I'm David King, Minister of Education and Administration at Friendship Baptist Church. Thank you for tuning in. This is our weekly adult Bible study. We are in uh, Explore the Bible here. We're on page 37. We're talking about the choice in Proverbs chapter 4. I'm so happy to have two great guys with me. These guys are wonderful. They help out. They have a passion for the Lord. And I think you're going to receive a lot today. But I'm so glad that you just tuned in. Don't forget to go to our YouTube channel or, or go to our website or any information. Uh, we always the information, we can send it back to you. Uh, we understand, Brother Mike, that we have people from different states tuning in. Yes. And it's just amazing. I think God does amazing things when mankind can't. Amen? Amen. It's good stuff. So I'm so glad you're here. I'm going to ask these guys to go ahead and uh, introduce themselves, and then we'll kind of go into a prayer time. Go ahead, Brother Mike. Um, I'm Lee Lindsay, uh, the co-teacher of the Faith Keepers. Good. And I'm Mike Fisher, the teacher of the uh, Faith Keepers class. And the Faith Keepers class is a really active class in our church. And so if you come to visit us, all of our Sunday classes are wonderful. I think the Faith Keepers are a great class to start, right? Yeah. That's good stuff. Well, every time we meet, we always pray. Not for praying sake, but because we need to invite the Lord into what we're doing. We need God's help. So, Brother Lee, if you'll kind of lead us through that as far as prayer requests, and then Brother Mike, after we pray, if you'll kind of give us the introduction of what we're talking about sure. today and read our scripture, that'd okay. be great. Brother Lee, what's going on? Uh, I think we need to pray for our, our country. We're in a terrible mess right oh, now. Goodness. I mean, we're in a terrible mess. You know, it's like people are, 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 are which is the anarchy right now. They're right. searching. This goes back to what I've always said. They're searching for something that's missing, and the only thing they can feel that is the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's it, nothing else. But we need to pray for all of our military, our police officers, our yeah. ambulance drivers, all of our emergency service. Pray for our leaders, too, right. to, 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 to give them the wisdom to make the correct decisions. Right, and that's not political. That's for, no matter who's in office, right? That doesn't we, matter. We need, we need to pray for no matter what you, you know, um, what you, what you call yourself, you know, right. what's the side of the physical spectrum, spectrum you're on. We need God's help in our country, local, state, and government level. We need the Lord. Mike, what's, what's on your heart? Hey, well, you, you and I were actually talking about that a few moments ago. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like, uh, 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 Brother Lee, we, we, we need to, as Christians, we need to ask the Lord to help us to respond right. to others. Uh, in, in the way, in the right way, right. with love. But I, I used a phrase: we need to spill love on other people, regardless of how they may treat us. That's right. I love that. That's it. what That's we need to pray for. Phrase. Well, you'll know someone's spiritual maturity by not how they react when things are good, but how they react when things are bad. Right. You know, right. when they're mistreated or, or somehow something doesn't go their way. And if you deal with any customer service right now. If you're listening to this and you deal in customer service, God bless you right now. Good yeah. Lord. Because people are just so intense right now. And they're, they're, uh, the mentality is, give me what I want, and I want it right now. Zero patience. <laughs> right. And, right. Uh, you know, as believers, we're called to be gentle, aren't we? Amen. Well, Brother Lee, go ahead and, and pray for us, and then we'll get right to our lesson. All right. Father, we thank you for this day. And Father, we thank you for all the people that are watching today. Bless their hearts, touch their hearts, Father. Father, we pray for our country. We pray for our leaders. We're going through some perilous times now. But Father, we know you're in control. You're in complete control, Father. Mm -hmm. We pray for our military people. Father, keep the protection hand of, of them. Guide them. Father, we pray for the, all of our emergency workers. Be with them, protect them, Father. We pray for our leaders of our country. Give them the wisdom the knowledge to make the correct decisions and protect them also, Father. We pray for uh, all the people in the churches that are ill, that are sick, that need the prayers. Mm -hmm. Father, we know that out there there's hope, that there's salvation. They just have to learn to accept it. It's a decision they need to make, Father. And we pray for uh, the community that you will lead us and guide us to the other side, Father, that we will go through that door mm -hmm. and we'll Go out there and be messengers for you, Father, as we're supposed to be. Yeah. And, Father, we ask all these things in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Amen. Lee. Amen. Well, Brother Mike, we're in Proverbs chapter 4. So can you give us an introduction that you have prepared for us, and then go ahead and read. You, you, know, got? you know, guys, life is, as, as you well know, life is filled with choices. Yes, sir. Lots of choices. Sometimes it may seem like we just have too many choices. Yeah. Like getting a simple car wash. Yep. I thought about this when I <laughs> wrote this out. Do you want to wash only? Do you want to wash in a wax? Do you want to wash wax in a tire shine? Oh boy. Or maybe you just want the wash, wax, tire shine, and maybe add the rain repellent. 
What about buffing the car after it's been dried? Yes, indeed. <laughs> Check. A lot to think about. Many choices. So in our context of Scripture today, we realize how much value Solomon places on getting wisdom mm -hmm. and understanding that can only come from the instruction of God's Word and the application mm -hmm. of God's Word. Not just mm -hmm. the instruction, mm -hmm. but the application of God's Word. He knew that wisdom would protect him from foolishness and give him a life of respect and honor. Mm -hmm. His father, King David, always encouraged him to embrace wisdom and consider her a priceless treasure. Right. So when David died and Solomon became king of Israel, he was only about 14 or 15 years old. That's what we think, that somewhere in that age group, he had an encounter with the Lord in a dream. So dreams are very important. Mm -hmm. God does speak through dreams. Solomon uh, only asked God for wisdom to lead God's people in obedience to him. God gave Solomon that wisdom and he became the wisest man ever upon the face of the earth. Wow. Solomon also wanted what was best for his son, for his son. He taught his son that life is about two choices. People who obeyed God, godly instruction took a pathway to satisfaction. And people who rejected God's wisdom took the path of wickedness. Solomon, like any other dad, could only point his son in the right direction. But he could not make the decision for him regarding which road to take. It's interesting that Jesus pointed out these two roads himself. Hmm. He did that himself in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. He said, Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So Jesus made it so plain in this scripture. He simply said that there's a wide road that leads to destruction. Mm -hmm. That separation from God forever mm -hmm. in a place called hell. But there's a narrow road that leads to everlasting life. That is, to, that is to spend eternity in a place called heaven and to never be separated from God forever in a place called hell. Mm. So we must teach our children the right way to go, but more importantly, we must show them by example the right way to go. Mm. Yes, it is easy to stumble and to be thrown off course, but guarding our hearts and minds is a God-centered exercise to keep us focused on the way of righteousness. Solomon tells us to avoid the pathway of the wicked. We are to turn away from it, or we may be drawn into that snare of the devil. He even reminds us that there are some people so wicked that they cannot even sleep at night mm. unless they're devising some scheme to cause someone else some harm. Wow. It is as though they get some sort of a high, you know, by hurting someone else. Mm. But the path of righteousness causes light to be spread out everywhere they go so that others will see our good works and glorify God. Now, of course, good works do not, does not save us, but they are an expression of walking with God in the right pathway. We are called by Solomon to attend to God's word. That means to study it and to hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against God. We're also reminded to ponder the path of our feet. What does that really mean? Well, let us answer that with a scripture. Psalm 119, 105, you guys are familiar with it. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet mm -hmm. and a light unto my pathway. Proverbs 16, 9, and I close with that, says, A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord mm -hmm. directs his steps. I like that. That is our introduction, gentlemen, to this like Proverbs 4 Very today. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for that. Go ahead and, and get in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 11. If you will, if you'll have your book, we're on page 37. If you're not, just you know, use the iPad or cell phone, whatever, and get to Proverbs chapter 4. And uh, I think we're starting on verse 11. Is that correct? Verse 11. Yep, yep. yep. And we're going to read that, and I think you can kind of see where we're going. Go ahead, Brother Mike. Okay. Uh, starting in verse 11, I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Mm. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Enter not into the path of the wicked. 
and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, mm. turn from it, and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause somebody to fall. Mm. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Mm. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, mm. for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, or to the left, remove thy foot from evil. Amen. Excellent. Wow. Thank you. wow. You know, yeah, really good. We have a choice to live godly or not the godly. A choice to, to feel and be satisfied with God and a choice not to be. That's right. It, it's his choice. Go ahead and read, Brother Lee, if you don't mind the end of our, oh. of our, of our, of our uh, study here, page 37, the All first right. paragraph there. The choice, Proverbs 4, 11 through 27. Life is filled with choices. Maybe too many choices. Yeah but choices nonetheless. Hearing the truth demands a response as well, a choice to either embrace or reject the truth. There is no neutrality when it comes to the truth. Neutrality is a choice to reject the truth. Solomon's plea in Proverbs 4 to hear, obey, and not turn away from the wisdom of God reminded God's people of the choices that lie before them. Mm -hmm. To embrace God's wisdom provides a way through life. To reject wisdom is to ensure destruction. So if you don't follow God's plan for your life, you will have destruction. There, there, there will be no peace in your life. So right now, like, people want, uh, they, they, they look at Christianity the, the way they look at a buffet. They like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and they put it on a plate because it makes them happy. But with God, either God is Lord of your life or He's not Lord at all, right? Amen. He's Amen. either one or the other. Now, go ahead and read up on page 38 there. Okay, that'd be the second program. Yes, sir. In chapters 1 and 3, Solomon began to lay out the dimensions of God's wisdom. He then called God's people to hear and attend to know understanding. Mm -hmm. He knew that information does not necessarily mean transformation, and facts do not always lead to obedient faith. Solomon urged God's people to hear and apply God's truth. So, Brother Lee, what does it mean that just information itself won't lead to faith? What's that mean? Well, it means that what we're doing or what we read does not mean that we're going to automatically become a Christian and believe in right. God and serve God. And uh, we, we have choices to make of that. And that's uh, the salvation from the Lord is given freely. Right. It was given freely to us. And uh, there's somebody that's watching this. And I know the world's in a turmoil right now mm -hmm. that they're thinking there's no hope in this world. There is hope. Mm -hmm. We just recently had a, a sister in our Sunday school class that was told she had 24 hours, she may not be here. Hmm. And the, we've been praying, and 24 hours later, she's ready almost to go home in a few days. Hmm. There's your hope. Hmm. That's the hope, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, we're, we're print scenarios right now where uh, people, at the very best, say there's no hope. Uh, you know, with, with coming out of this thing. You know, I hear watch on TV where people say, it's going to be years before we change. It's going to be years before we're back to normal. And some of that may be true, but we, there's always hope with the Lord. There's Amen. always hope with the Lord. Amen. He, he works out in situations where things are blameless. One of the blessings of the Lord is no matter where you are and what's going on in your life, God can still reach you. Amen. And there are a lot of folks who are listening this day with Lee you think that, you know, God's forgot about them, or they've, they've made too many mistakes, and God can't forgive them. But that's not true, is it? No, you can, never make, you can never make it. There's nothing you can have done. God loves you so much. Right. God, he, God freely gave His only begotten Son t to save you, to spend right. eternity with Him. Right. There's nothing you can do. God will never turn His back on you. As one professor told me, how you define grace defines your belief system. So if you think grace is something that God only gives to nice people, then that defines your belief system. If you think grace is something that only gives to certain ethnicities, 
Well, that defines your belief system. But God's grace is for everybody. No matter what right. we've done, where we are, there are natural consequences of sin, but God's grace always prevails. God does that. Go ahead and read that, that, that second, that third paragraph there. The third paragraph? Yeah, well, just the, the path of wisdom. Uh, okay, the path of wisdom is defined in 4, 1 through 11. Solomon reminded God's people to remember the wisdom of God as though they were remembering the wisdom of their fathers and mothers. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's mm -hmm. good. That's good. That's powerful. He challenged them not to abandon God's instruction, but to obtain its wise counsel at all costs. No price is too high to obtain God's truth. Mm -hmm. Further, Solomon called God's people to embrace and cherish truth as if it were precious commodity. Well, when you look at truth and you realize, okay, so should I really listen or should I try to see if I'm the exception? I see a lot of people who want to be the exception, right? That's right. And That's God, right. Doesn't, God doesn't call us to be exceptions. God calls us to be obedient. Obedient. Uh, Brother Mike, when, when folks are 30 and younger, they, they seem to think, I mean 25, they seem to think that maybe they can kind of live life outside the rules. But in your experience, what happens when a 20 or 25 year old they try to live outside the rules and do what they want to do. What happens to them? Well, we talked about destruction, a life of destruction, a life of disappointment. Right. Um, it, it's it's not good. It's right. not good at all to right. even think that we can live outside of God's will. Yeah, he calls us there's certain parameters that we're supposed to live, you know, and being faithful to God is one of them. You, you can't. You can't not be faithful to God and expect God to bless you, right? Not going to happen. Brother Lee, go ahead and read that last paragraph there when it says, there as if, and then we'll, we'll end here real quick. You're talking about then as, okay. Yes, sir. Then as if to add layer upon layer of the choices that God's people must make to live according to God's wisdom. Solomon described in striking terms two separate ways of living. One way leads to destruction, and the other way leads to life. Amen. The decision to remain in one's sin Devoid of wisdom of God is a choice set before all people. All people already in the way of sin and destruction. God's wisdom and grace in Jesus Christ is the only exit ramp off of the way of the wow. universe. Wow. wow. So if you're watching this today and you're following God and you're not quite sure what to do, let me give you some advice if you'll, if you'll listen. Uh, follow God with all that you have, with 100%, and let, yeah. trust Him. Let Him take care of the rest. Don't sit there and think, well, I can follow God next week or tomorrow or the next day. Follow God today. Ask God to reveal in your heart and your mind what you need to do to change to follow Him. If you are a young couple and you're just starting off and you think about having kids, look, this may sound offensive, but I would rather them, Brother Mike, pray and figure out how they're going to raise that child than have a child and not know how to raise it. Does that make any sense? Right. Makes a lot of you know, sense. figure out what you want to do. Figure out what kind of discipline you're going to have, and figure out you know, you know how you're going to raise that child in a godly home. Don't have a child and then wait and say, "Well, what are we going to do?" Wait for a moment. Figure out what you're going to do. If you're ready to retire and you think you've worked uh, 50, 60 years, and you think that God's finished with you, He's not finished with you. He's yeah. just getting started. The oh, Lord right. wants to refire your life, and if you are a Maybe someone who hasn't gone to church in a while and you just decided to maybe watch this because you're bored. Thank you for watching us, but we wanted to connect you to a local church. If you'll connect with us, no matter what state you live in, we will connect you with a local Bible-believing church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Brother Lee, anything want to, uh, you want to share with us real quick before we uh, go ahead and, and turn off? Any last thought you want to give everybody? Well, uh, all I want to say is this. is No matter what you're going through, mm. no matter what you've been through, yeah, I like that. Right. know what you think you can't go through, God's grace is sufficient to carry you through anything. All you have to do is ask. It's free. He gave yeah. it freely. Thank you, Brother Lee. Brother yes. Mike, any last thoughts? Yes, uh, to, to, to sort of jump on top of what you just shared, Brother Lee, I'm reminded of Pilate in the Bible who uh, Jesus stood before Pilate right. and uh, he uh, said, I find no fault in right. him. And uh, to make the long story short, he reached over and he put his hands in a bowl and he thought maybe he could wash his hands of Jesus' blood. But, mm -hmm. but Jesus himself said, I am the truth. I am the way. I am the life. And there is no other way. So Jesus truly is the only way to heaven. And That's don't right. be fooled by other ways that say there are more than one ways. There's only one way. Amen. It's the Lord. Only one God, only one Jesus. Amen. 
Well, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm so happy you did. We'll see you next week. We're praying for you. And remember this, we love you.